Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here for a great edition and a good TV show review on Brooklyn Nine-Nine. You guys know I love that show. This is from season three, episode 21, Maximum Security. Before I get started, check out the sponsorship. This video is brought to you by manscaped.com. So I'm thinking of gift buying and a crazy question pops up. If I were a pilgrim, what gift would I buy on Black Friday or Cyber Monday? Manscaped, of course. The Pilgrims love the Performance Package bundled with advanced skin safe technology on both the Lawn Mower 3.0 waterproof cordless trimmer and the Weed Whacker nose and ear hair trimmer. Plus, it comes with the Shears 2.0 luxury six piece stainless steel nail kit. There's even a cool LED light, really helpful for the dark. So when you're gift shopping for Mayflower folk, family, friends, maybe that special man in your life, which could even be you. Manscaped is the perfect gift. Oh, and don't forget the Pilgrims of Puritans. They loved great deals. Go to manscaped.com slash jewel. Now through Cyber Monday, 1130 and save 25% site-wide. Plus two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Box of Briefs. Be the best groomed pilgrim in the new world. Go, pilgrim. Go. All right, we're gonna get right into watching this episode. They need information, so they gotta send an undercover into a maximum security prison, and it's female. So let's get to this episode. Let's have a little fun on this, and you know it's gonna be fun. It's Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Thank you for all finally showing up. Let's recap. As you know, Jimmy the Butcher Figgis put out a hit on Adrian Pimento, which the mob believes succeeded. For his safety, Pimento has gone off the grid. Remember, the only people we can trust with this information are in this room. And Genevieve. We can trust Genevieve. We share a life. I tell her everything. Fine. They're having a meeting. First of all, in something like this, they're not going to have that many people in a meeting. They actually call that in this kind of stuff. They call that essential personnel or a need-to-know basis. Brooklyn Nine-Nine, though. -Nine, Unfortunately, we can't just arrest Figgis because he has a man inside the FBI. The good news is we have a lead that's going to break this case wide open. Maura Figgis. Jimmy's sister. She's currently serving in a maximum security prison in Texas. They always use her. You remember her? That actress who played the figgis girl is the uh, the one from The Sopranos, the crazy sister. This isn't one of those women's prisons that we've all seen being all sexy on late night cable, you know, with the ladies touching each other's bits and there's kind of some lame jazz playing. When these chicks fight, it's for real. That's a funny line. I don't know what prisons he's watched on late night TV that are sexy and all that. And not that, that great now. As an ex-inmate, I wouldn't have mind being in a female prison. You are Isaac Schwartz, my older Jewish mentor, and you are Isabel Cortez. You're in for stabbing a man on the subway 46 times in the trachea. Isabel Cortez, welcome to your new home. This is going to be fun. Really? Okay, fresh meat. You're being transferred here because you made trouble in your last prison. That won't fly here. Stay in your lane. Hey, you're that cop who arrested me three years ago in Brooklyn. Uh... Of course, they can't use Rosa. Rosa gets recognized right away. Right with you. And, and that would happen. Especially with local police departments and stuff like that. So yeah, that, that does happen. And they have to watch it. When people go undercover, you always see them on TV to put hoods over their heads or they block their faces out or even wear the ski mask because they got to stay undercover, whether it's uh, narcotics, usually narcotics or something like that, but they go undercover. My name is Isabel Cortez. I'm in for murder because some perv on the subway tried to touch me and I was like, did someone order a tracheotomy? Okay, I think that's a little too technical. We need to work on your tough talk. So, what are you in for, Cortez? None of your damn business. Nice. Keep going with that. I'm going to split you like a Sunday with Grandpa, bitch. Kind of funny trying to show the girl how to do things and how to act or how to talk in prison. Are you kidding me? You think that would really happen? I mean, meaning they got to get someone who knows. Otherwise, they can't just turn like that. It just doesn't work that way. All right, our camera is up. We have picture and sound. Amy should be meeting her new cellmate any second now. What's up? What's up? Good. She's abbreviating just like we practiced, even though she hates it. I like the fact that they have cameras and they're watching her. Obviously, prisons do now have cameras everywhere. I wish we talked like that more. No. Where are you from? 
But I got to stop it while they're talking in a prison. They wouldn't have cameras like that unless it's a special prison where they have 24-hour surveillance on that person in the cell. I've never seen that, and I've never seen them in bathrooms or stuff like that. Now, going in and out of the bathrooms and the hallways and stuff like that in the units, obviously, but not in the cell. Oh, it's happening. You dropped the contraband. Hey, where do you get that crap? I got a hook up on the outside so I can get anything for a price. This is yours, if you can get the word out about my store. I love when they talk about a store in prison. Uh, those things aren't a store. A store in prison is when you're selling items two for three. You borrow two ramen noodle soups, you gotta give three back, a like commissary day, or whatever deal you work out with the store man. This is contraband, this is like, not a store would have that, but it, a person would have it, cell phones or drug connections or whatever like that. See Amy, how is she? Great, she just got lunch, double helping of spinach. Baby's gonna love that folic acid. You are so strange. All right, this is her first time eating in the dining hall. Where she chooses to sit is very important. That is so true, where you sit, in a chow hall, when you get your food or when you go into that chow hall, means a lot. You know, you just can't sit down where you want. I mean, it depends on whose table it is, who's running things. You can get in trouble there. I've seen a guy get stabbed in prison for sitting in the wrong area, just like that. Oh, good. Here comes Mora. Hey, Cortez, I hear you can smuggle in crap from outside. Noise. It's working. That's right, baby. What do you want? What I want is for you to back the hell off because I'm the only store in this prison. Hey, what's going on? I was talking to Figus, and then the guard said I had an appointment. I'm not supposed to check in until tomorrow. People might get suspicious. Look, we called you in because your first contact with Figus was a disaster. Why, because her smuggling plan backfired and she threatened to kill me? They keep bringing her back into the office because he's scared of his girl uh, getting in trouble in there. That's kind of funny. We need a new plan. And I've got one. I need to step to her. Step to her? Amy, this isn't High School Musical. Yeah, Amy, this isn't High School Musical 2. Yeah, and it isn't High School Musical 3 senior year. What goofball cops are the two detectives? In the interest of keeping you as unshanked as possible, I think maybe we need a signal in case things go south. Unshanked? <laughs> By not getting shanked? I'm really impressed with you too. You disagreed with the best strategy, but talked it through like adults. Well, the key is trust. I trust her to stay out of danger, and she trusts me not to interfere. Oh my god, she just pushed Figgis into the garbage. She's in danger. I must interfere. What the hell do you think you're doing, huh? Showing my unborn baby how an ass gets kicked. Fights in prison are so common. I mean, even in women's prisons, they get crazy, man. Female prisons are wild. Uh, I was in a halfway house with the girl, and she was telling me how they, you know, make dildos and do all the crazy stuff in, in, in female prisons. And they got stabbings and, you know, lesbian sex, everything you want, even rapes and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's a violent place. All right, Cortez, time for your checkup. No, thank you, I feel fine. No, you don't, it's your uterus. It's gonna explode. Come with me. Stand back, everyone. You're all in the splash zone. Ow. This youth's gonna move. Here we go. So disgusting. You're all in the splash zone. I think I know how to get things back on track. I love the plan to get her credibility back. Late for your appointment. Quit touching me. <laughs> punch, punch. I don't need checkups every two seconds, you dimple chin. I'm just a beautiful intellectual. How would you like to kick the shit out of your boss? <laughs> Dr. Schwartz, I'm here for my appointment. Hello, Cortez. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom? I don't know, but Jake made me Jewish. That is a good meeting spot, the medical, but they wouldn't be able to go there all the time, every minute of every day. What's going on with you and that doctor? You seem real tight with him. No, we're not tight. I barely know him. So why were you hugging him? My last appeal got denied, so he was comforting me. He's a sensitive guy. Maybe because of his Jewish faith. I want to talk to him alone. Oh, about something medical or? What did I tell you about asking too many questions? Right, that's that thing you killed a bunch of bitches for. <laughs> She's playing a good part, the girl from Sopranos. So you're Dr. Schwartz? That's me, look I am. How can I help you? I've been watching you ever since you showed up here. You don't seem like the other doctors that we've had. It's funny, uh, my best friend Jakob is always saying that. Oh. Cut the crap. We both know why I'm here. We do? Your heart's beating a mile a minute. It's not because I'm nervous. 
Cortez says that you're sensitive. I like that. I've only been with cheating scum. Oh. You know, I hear about a lot of sex in these in these prisons, so. Everything okay in here? Yeah. Oh, good. He was just checking me out. Mm -hmm. um, and I will see you soon, Doctor. Mm -hmm. Later. Yeah, later. Curse is perfect, but. And she's no beauty queen, this inmate. Why can't I find a good man? Could be because you're in prison for murder. Nah. <laughs> Why can't you find a good man? Because you're in prison for murder. But believe it or not, death row and, and murders get fan mail. There's some crazy people out there. Uh, no, I do want to hear about them. Please, tell me everything about them. Thanks. I'll tell you what, that was fun. I love watching it. Just It makes me relax, those episodes. Whenever I see an episode with prison or something of that nature in any of these shows... I want to do a review on it and see how it was. So we'll be doing more different shows and stuff. So if you have ideas, make sure you comment and like and do your stuff. And obviously, they don't show real stuff in these kind of shows. But it's just giving you a perspective of what a woman's prison could be like. So anyway, I hope you liked it. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. And please, make good choices.